Hello and welcome to the Autocar Show. Wishing everyone a happy 2016. It's going to be an action-packed year again in the auto industry because we never stop working. And of course, we always bring you action-packed episodes. We begin with something new. This car has been a long time coming. The Endeavour was one of the first few really traditional big SUVs around. And almost 12 years later now, it's here in a brand new Avtar. Well, let's find out if a decade later it can pack in as much punch. The front is the most upright part of the styling with the sculpted bonnet, the large double slatted grille and the skid plates that give it beef. The rest is quite changed actually with the steeply raked windscreen and the angled belt line. The rear too gets a powered tailgate minus the spare wheel which is now placed under the chassis. Despite the softening of the corners, it's still a gigantic, imposing SUV. There are a lot of these annoying alarms that you will hear consistently. And sometimes even when the car is stationary and you don't have your seatbelt on, it will just keep going every couple of seconds. But when you get into this vehicle, it also amplifies how large it is. I've had to haul myself into this seat and from behind the wheel, it feels huge. Well, the interiors are much nicer than before. They feel far more upmarket and richer. There's a lovely double stitch leather which covers the top of the dash. The central part of the dash has nice glossy plastic, satin metal. Of course, there's the integrated touchscreen over here now. And I also particularly like the dials and the two displays that are around them, which give you a whole load of information. Materials and textures add to the richness of the cabin. There are the leather seats and the chrome accents around the cup holders and power sockets and all the buttons and knobs as well. There are plenty of storage places and practical grab handles all over with it being an SUV. The titanium version we were driving came with LED lights and the SYNC 2 system that has Bluetooth connectivity, streaming and voice command. Variants will also get the active park assist that steers for you as well. Those are all the features and all that's up front for what's in it for the passengers. As you can see, there's plenty of room here in the middle row. And in fact, I think it's a lot wider now, so you feel more space on the inside. You still sit a little low to the ground, but that's much better than before as well. And the seats themselves, extremely comfortable. So I think long journeys will be easy over here. You have the rotary AC vents, which are easy to direct. So overall, a pretty comfortable place to be, but let's check out the third row as well. It's actually an exercise. If the seats aren't up, you have to pop around to the rear, open the tailgate, put them up, then come around to the side. You would have had to sit in the seat and move it forward on the rails before you flip it down, as otherwise it's close to impossible. And then after all that, you have to squeeze into the rear seats. Once you're there, you'll find that they're low to the ground and quite hemmed in. So I realized it's best to keep those rear seats flipped down and use the additional space in the boot. Though the boot is large enough, even with the seats up. But back to the front, behind the wheel and on the road to test if the Endeavour's performance is better too. Now once you're driving, the Endeavour really doesn't feel as large as when you look at it or just initially get behind the wheel. And that's largely due to the steering wheel. It's light and easy, so nipping in and out of traffic gaps is, is simple. And you know what really, really actually surprised me about this is when I stopped to take a U-turn, I was pretty surprised with the fact that this just did it in one go. I didn't need to make a three-point turn. And that's pretty amazing for a car of this size. You see, it's as simple as that. It feels surprisingly light to drive and that's really a boon. Also without the spare wheel at the rear, parking is easier with an unfettered rear view. The new Endeavour comes with a choice of engines, a 5-cylinder 3.2-litre diesel and a 4-cylinder 2.2-litre diesel engine. Now of course give us a choice and we'll always pick the bigger engine first. 3.2-litre it is. This engine is vocal. 
and the more you push it, the more vocal it gets. Also, it doesn't really react a whole load better if you flatten your foot. So, it's better to drive it a notch down anyway. Now, this 3.2 litre takes a little while to get going, but once you're in the meat of the band, it does feel strong. Once you're past the 2200 RPM mark, you'll find it pulls strongly and powerfully, but that's more felt in flat out accelerations. In normal driving conditions, it's not that easy. What really spoils the party here is the gearbox. It's slow to react, it doesn't shift down quickly. The manual mode improves the delivery of power and you can really feel the might of it. Still, in everyday conditions, it's the smaller engine that surprised us. The 2.2-litre engine feels more refined in comparison to the 3.2-litre. Whether you're ambling around or whether you push it harder, it's less noisy. Not only that, though it had the lower power and torque, it actually delivered it much better. Now, this 2.2-litre engine is the one that I would pick because I find that it gets off the line much easier, it feels more responsive and, you know, most of us drive in city conditions most of the time, so this is the engine that will feel better over there. Now, it may not be as strong as the 3.2-litre and it may not get up to speed as quick as that one does, but it never feels underpowered and it settles into a cruise pretty comfortably too. Overall, the slightly lighter two-wheel version 2.2 also felt more planted to drive and tucked into corners better. Even the steering had slightly more feel. Now, grip is impressive and you find that you can carry much more speed into corners than you would expect to in a car of this size. With the ladder on frame setup, roll is really unavoidable, but it's well contained and the Endeavour never feels top heavy. It also doesn't pitch much when you brake hard and as a result you feel secure behind the wheel at all times. The only place where there's room for improvement is the brakes. They could have been a little sharper. Of course, with that ground clearance you can pretty much go over anything. But even on bad sections of road like this, I'm finding craters, potholes, anything. It just smothers them. If you are in the back seat, you will be tossed around a little, especially as you pick up the pace. But, as far as the segment goes, I have to say the Endeavour does a good job of the ride overall. Well, we did this test before the launch and so estimate the prices to start around 24 lakh for the two-wheel drive 2.2 litre and go up to around 30 lakhs for the top-end 4x4 3.2 litre. Well, like I said in the beginning, these new Endeavours have been a long time coming. Were they worth the wait? I definitely think so. There's a lot that's new here. They feel far more modern. They look different. The interiors are nicer. There's more space. They drive nicely. They ride nicely. There's a range of engines for you to pick from. So a lot going for the new Endeavour. Now, if I were to choose between these two, the 2.2 litre would be my pick of the bunch. And here's why. Because 80% of our time is spent in cities. So this is the engine that actually responds better, drives nicer. Overall, the car also feels better to drive as far as handling goes. And of course, it's going to be cheaper and the one that's more frugal to run.